Hi folks, Lou here again with the Confusions of Game Design series to talk about the difference between old school gaming and new school gaming, or at least my version, how I think I understand people to really mean it, even though they don't always have this exactly in mind. Well, these terms are often used in tabletop role-playing games, but they can apply to all games, hobby games. It's, they're about attitudes toward gameplay. Partially, they reflect changing generations, the strong influence of video games, and much more. Keep in mind, video games are now much, much bigger in terms of participation and money than tabletop games, whereas 50 years ago, there were no commercial video games. And because I'm 69, I have a view of considerably more than 50 years about how things have changed in games. So the fundamental difference is between earning what you achieve versus being rewarded for participation. In old school games, players are expected to earn their way to whatever they achieve. There is no hand-holding. The games are intended to have gameplay depth. Uh, another term for these games is opposed games, where there's a definite opposition that it can affect you. New school games offer rewards for participation. They can have considerable hand-holding. They tend to be about variety rather than gameplay depth. New school games are also often puzzles or are storytelling vehicles. These terms, are, or these attitudes, I should say, are not really new. It, old school and new school have always been with us. New school in party and family games and old school in games like chess and checkers and go and, and other opposed games. It's called old in RPGs because the original players of RPGs were war gamers and we're talking considerably more than 40 years ago. And they were used to earning something when they played. To have, having to earn something, not being given things. Now we have lots of non-war gamers who often aren't even gamers playing RPGs and so we call it the new school even though such things have always been around to some extent or another. It's just it's more common now. And again, this is not just RPGs. It's board and card games and video games as well. But in RPGs, if there is real danger to characters, you have to cooperate to survive. There's some relation to reality, and that's the old school. And if the RPG is a storytelling vehicle or something with no real danger, it's new school. Now, player interaction can come in here. For millennia, games were highly interactive or chess-like. You have to pay close attention to your opponent's move, and usually you have to react to it, or you'd be on the road to a loss. Modern board games, many of which are really puzzles, are not designed that way. The other players have little effect on you and vice versa, so there's very little player interaction. But this enables a new school attitude, or at least some distance toward it. In single-player video games, which dominated until recently and probably are still the majority, you were really solving a puzzle, trying to find a solution to, quote, beat the game, unquote. And once you beat the game, you didn't play again because you'd solved the puzzle. There was no point. Because of save games and respawning, you're not in danger of losing. In the original arcade games, you were. But once you had home video games, then people already had paid for the game, and it wasn't necessary to, to beat them over the head to make them lose so they had to pay more money. So the worst thing that can happen in, in a video game is in an athletic wear game where there's lots of uh, hand-eye coordination and just sheer speed, you may not have what it takes to get through the game. But in general, in single-player video games, you're being rewarded. You're not earning much of anything. Of course, the old school people in video games believe in games that are really hard to succeed at. These two attitudes don't mix very well. <clears throat> That's probably an understatement. Old school will find reward for participation tiresome or won't take it seriously. 
New School will be shocked by active aggression, by being targeted individually, by not being left alone to do what they want to do. They can actually feel it's unfair when somebody does something negative to them. Now, there are very few old school party games and far more new school of that type because party games aren't supposed to be anything but simple fun. But as game playing has become more popular, we have party gamers and family gamers moving into hobby gaming. They're often called casual gamers in video games. They don't want to be challenged by their entertainment, which is understandable. They want to be rewarded for playing. Fair enough, but it's a different attitude than the old grognard attitude, I suppose you might say. As more people play games, or what they call games, the smaller the proportion of old schoolers will be in the mix. Thanks for listening.